Gary Aguirre is a former SEC lawyer who was fired from the agency while trying to investigate the Pequot case back in 2005. He says the SEC missed an opportunity to stop insider trading from becoming rampant in the hedge fund world. Gary is with us this morning from San Diego. Gary, why a missed opportunity? What could have happened? Well, I think the SEC has recognized in the last year or so that uh, hedge funds have been using, a group of hedge funds have used insider trading as a business model. That was our conclusion five years ago. Uh, most of the evidence the SEC has uh, cited uh, for the filing and uh, settlement with Mr. Sandberg was discovered five years ago. I uncovered it myself. Uh, the last piece of the evidence was turned over to the SEC in uh, December of 2008, and uh, that had come to me through uh, an anonymous source. Now, had the investigation not been stopped by the SEC, uh, and uh, along with my firing in 2005, there's no doubt in my mind that we would have completed the investigation and filed these charges at that time. And I think that would have been a very clear statement to the hedge funds that were using insider trading as a business model in 2005 that the SEC was not a toothless tiger. Uh, Gary, I just want to be clear about this. Are we to believe that if the Pequot case had gone forward the way you wanted to investigate it, things like Galleon might not have happened? Exactly. What else is out there that we don't know about? Hedge funds using, I mean, uh, Robert Kazami talked about it yesterday. Hedge funds using insider trading as a business model. We know about Pequot. We know about Galleon. What else is there? What else did you look at that gave you an idea that this was becoming standard practice on the street? Well, in 2005, if you look, if you look through the Senate report uh, that was issued in August of 2007, the Senate report discussed uh, market manipulation in 95 public companies. Uh, there were 18 other insider trading cases that were uh, either shallowly investigated or not investigated at all. Uh, and after 2005, uh, we, where we were in 2005, as you might say, we were studying the, uh, the, the art of uh, market abuse and fraud at that time. In 2006, in 2007, in 2008, uh, the game changed. Uh, hedge funds became more involved in credit default swaps. Uh, they significantly increased their volume of credit default swaps. Uh, so to file a case in 2010 that should have been filed in 2005 doesn't deal with what's going on now. Uh, I think I saw an article by William Cohen that talked about, you know, is, is the uh, uh, folks that gave us the 2008 going to get off free? And uh, the uh, major banks, uh, Lehman and, and uh, Merrill, uh, I think that if the uh, Pequot case would have been filed in 2005, it would have been a message to the, to the big hedge funds, the ones that are, uh, have been playing the, the games uh, with the market, that you could be next. And that message needed to get out. Also, there are no criminal proceedings coming out of this case. And the reason for that is that the statute of limitations on criminal insider trading expired in 2006. That sends an even more powerful message. The curious aspect of this current case is that there was $2.1 million in hush money paid. At least that's, that appears to be what occurred between uh, 2007 and 2009 by, Mr., by uh, Pequot to Mr. Zilka. That's also a crime. I'm not hearing about what, what the government is doing about that. Gary, I'm afraid we have to end it there, but those are some powerful insights. Clearly, it remains a powerful story for you. The SEC closing the book on the Pequot investigation yesterday, but as you just heard from Gary Aguirre, at least in his opinion, this is a story of missed opportunities.